After voting unanimously in favour of the Irish government's highly controversial hate speech bill, Sinn Féin is now suddenly opposed to the legislation, would you believe? Sinn Féin, which voted for the legislation in the Dáil, said it wants the bill scrapped. This is a rather interesting development, of course, when you consider the fact that every single one of their TDs that were present on the day voted for the hate speech bill when it was put in front of them in the Dáil, giving it their full backing. And now they're criticizing a policy that they themselves voted for, citing free speech concerns. Uh, we were very concerned that this legislation was being used as a Trojan horse for silencing dissent. And for that reason... So why did you vote for it in the doll then? We could not. Well, we were very clear from the outset that we had concerns in relation to that. Right from the very few first minutes of the speeches that were given, we expressed concerns. Now, we gave the government every opportunity to resolve that, uh, allowing it to proceed to committee stage. So to be clear, first you vote for something, and then after it proceeds with your help, you turn around to the general public and say, now let me tell you why that thing I just voted for is a lot of dangerous nonsense. Of course, I knew it was dodgy all along. I was just supporting it to give the government a chance to realize that too. That's their story apparently, and they're sticking to it. Now, this is obviously not a great look for Ireland's party of change, it must be said. Some might argue that they are simply trying to save their own backsides as they see their support repeatedly slump in poll after poll, seemingly with no end in sight. Which is why they have employed a variety of arguments to try and explain away this very obvious U-turn. So, for example, they argued that they proposed amendments to the hate speech bill because they thought it was unacceptable in its current form and needed to be modified in various ways to make it more palatable. And they would have gotten away with it too if it wasn't for that dastardly government shooting down all of Sinn Féin's common sense tweaks and adjustments. They were going to make it fit for purpose, I tells you, but they were foiled by no fault of their own. The Sinn Féin had raised serious concerns with this legislation right through the process, had tabled a number of amendments, and the government, through their arrogance, refused to listen not only to Sinn Féin's amendments, but also to the uh, other amendments that were coming from the opposition. But it was very clear that Minister Harris and Minister McEntee uh, were not taking on board any amendments, they were not making changes, they were not listening to the concerns that were being raised. Now that is really something to behold. You'd be hard-pressed to see chicanery like that outside of a used car dealership. So let's take a look at some of Sinn Féin's proposed amendments to the hate speech bill, shall we? This ought to be a fun and informative experience for everyone involved. So for starters, the government version of the hate speech bill seeks to ban allegedly hateful speech based on the following characteristics. Race, colour, nationality, religion, national or ethnic origin, descent, gender, sex characteristics, sexual orientation or disability. So if you express quote-unquote hate, whatever that means, based on any of these traits, you could potentially be found guilty of a criminal offence under this law. That's the government's proposal. And by the way, as a brief aside, it also says that it protects genders other than male or female. So if someone doesn't identify as a man or a woman, but as one of the hundreds of other genders, then that identity should be protected too under Irish law, according to this legislation. Although, of course, the government has no idea what those genders might be exactly, or indeed how many of them there even are. The hate speech bill explicitly refers to more genders than just male or female. Your Shannon leader, Senator Regina Doherty previously said that there are about nine genders. Generations ago, there were two genders. You know, there were two sexes. There still are two sexes, but today I think we probably have about nine genders. And that doesn't diminish any other gender within the gender identity set. So how many genders are there? And, you know, can we get the government's official position on that? Oh, look, there isn't, there isn't official position on that, but, you know, the, I'm sure that will all be debated in the course of the debates of the Jonathan. It's a bit like 99 bottles of beer on the wall, except in this case, it's 99 genders our brains have stalled, but that's neither here nor there. The point is, that's what the government version of this legislation says currently. So how did Sinn Féin propose modifying this section exactly? Did they call for it to be reined in and made more restrictive on free speech grounds? Well, not exactly. 
They called for it to be expanded even further. Sinn Féin called for migration status to be added as one of the protected characteristics in addition to all the others we just went over. And they even added references to migration status include references to persons seeking international protection, persons with refugee status, persons with permission to remain, and persons with any other regular or irregular migrant status. So for those who don't know, irregular migration is usually a polite way of saying illegal immigration. It's when you enter a state through illegitimate means under the radar of the authorities, for example, in the back of a truck through a port or something. Very often, it includes some chancer who's just trying to evade the authorities and sneak into the country on a shipping container when he has no legal right to be here whatsoever. And the Sinn Féin Amendment clearly references this because it says it wants to cover any regular or irregular migrant status. To make matters even more remarkable, Sinn Féin proposes defining the word hate as including bias. So putting all of this together then, under Sinn Féin's proposal, if you express bias against an illegal immigrant and say he shouldn't be in the country because he's breaking our laws and has no right to be here, that's potentially hate speech in their view. You could theoretically be found guilty of a criminal offence and jailed if you criticise an illegal immigrant. That's what Sinn Féin's contribution to this legislation was. That's the kind of amendment that they were putting forward. So when they say, oh, we were dubious of this bill from day one, which is why we proposed amendments, they don't tell you that those amendments were to try and make the bill even more draconian. They wanted the government to add more reasons to put people in jail for their words. That part, oddly enough, doesn't seem to make it into the press releases. Moreover, Sinn Féin has repeatedly and falsely claimed that they voted against this bill in the Shannad when that simply isn't the case. They said this in a widely publicised press release by their justice spokesman, Pa Daly, last week, and they repeated this false claim the following night on the national airwaves of RTE. And it's for that reason that we voted against it in June 2023. You're referring to the Shannad? Yes. On the spot, RTE's David McCullough, to his credit, called Sinn Féin out for this and said, you didn't vote against it, you voted for an amendment proposed by Independent Senator Michael McDowell, but you didn't vote against the hate speech bill itself. Yeah, I took a look at the Shannon debates. In actual fact, your, your party colleagues in the Shannon didn't vote against the bill. They voted in favour of an amendment by Michael McDowell to delay consideration of the second stage for six months. When that was defeated, the second stage went through in the Shannon without a vote, so they didn't vote against the bill per se. And then having been confronted on this point, the Sinn Féin spokesman was backed into a corner and was forced to concede, well, yeah, technically we didn't vote on the bill in the Shannon, but the amendment we did vote on proposed scrapping the hate speech bill. So, you know, that counts for something. In as much as we could have, David, I suppose that's a technical thing based on the fact that the government has such a heavy majority in the Shannon Mm. that neither ourselves or the independent were in a position to call a vote. So the only way that we could call a vote on it was that amendment and that amendment specifically called for the scrapping of the legislation and we voted for that. That is not what the amendment says either. The amendment said nothing about scrapping the hate speech bill. It was simply about postponing the Shannon debate on the hate speech bill until the end of the year to make sure the legislation wasn't rushed. I also want to uh, move the amendment in my name, which is to uh, postpone the consideration of the second stage until the end of the year. But I want to do it on on this basis only, that it was only um, um, proposed on the basis that we aren't going to rush this thing through. And that amendment specifically called for the scrapping of the legislation. I even asked Senator Michael McDowell's office for clarity on this point, and they confirmed to me that the amendment was simply about postponing the legislation. And yet Sinn Féin actually reposted this clip to their social media channels, never correcting the false claim. So to recap... First, Sinn Féin claimed that they put forward amendments to the legislation, but neglected to mention that those amendments would have made the legislation even more draconian than the government's plan. Then they repeatedly and falsely claimed that they voted against the bill in the Shannon, which was untrue. And then once this was exposed as untrue and they were confronted about it, they said, well, yeah, that technically wasn't true, but we voted for an amendment to scrap it. And that wasn't true either. So if Sinn Féin don't support the bill anymore, then they could just say that. 
Just say you've thought about it, you've realized you were wrong, and it was a bad idea, and you've reconsidered your position. The public respects self-deprecating honesty, and they understand that elected representatives, as human beings, make mistakes. People are generally forgiving of sincere contrition. But what people are not forgiving of is a party that clearly supports a policy, and then when they realize that said policy is unpopular because they're going down in the polls, they suddenly start denying that they ever had anything to do with it and start claiming, we were skeptical from day one and blah, blah, blah. Nobody respects that approach, nor should they. They're even doing the same thing on immigration lately. Here's Sinn Féin's Matt Carthy saying that Ireland should take asylum seekers because of our international obligations. Can Ireland ever cap the number of refugee and asylum seekers coming into the country? So I think the one fact that we all have to accept is that Ireland has not only an international legal obligation, but we also have a moral obligation to um, ensure that those people who are fleeing war and persecution um, are welcomed, um, integrated and supported and housed in our society. And then here he is last week saying that Ireland should not sign up to more international obligations because we should have sovereignty over our own immigration policy. All of those issues are best determined at a national level. The other problem I have... So, so you're taking a kind of a, a, a pro-migrant view on that one when it comes to... No, their what I'm saying, I'm taking a right? pro-sovereignty view. I'm taking... I'm saying decisions in these matters when they are best made at national and local level, that's where they should be made. Well, they're already on the record as a party as having said that they don't believe there should be any limit on the number of asylum seekers that Ireland takes in. We understand when people flee for their lives seeking international protection, we will we will afford that yes. to people. So are you fully supportive also... are you fully supportive then? of the government's policy of, of not limiting numbers of, of you Ukrainians can't, you coming can't to the country. Number. You can't limit numbers. When people are seeking asylum and fleeing for their lives, of course you have an obligation to, to afford international protection. We all know that. And now they want to pivot to seem more immigration restrictionist as that becomes the issue that's in vogue. I don't know anybody who is in favour of open borders uh, I'm certainly not. Next, they'll probably start distancing themselves from transgender policies, despite saying things like this in the past. We must ensure that abortion services are available in Ireland. I think it's important that we assure, ensure that every woman, and I want to include in these this trans persons, those who identify as non-binary, the trans community played an important role in the repeal campaign, as did non-binary people. So I urge the Minister to reflect on the demands made by transgender and non-binary actives and medical professionals for the inclusion of gender-neutral language. There's nothing wrong with changing your view over time. In fact, it can be an intellectually honest and respectable thing to do as new information comes to light. But this kind of carry-on just reeks of desperation.